very warm welcome. Uh, last week we had uh, views as far as uh, Japan, Kuala Lumpur, uh, so very, very warm welcome indeed. Tonight we have, um, we're going to have a look at an insight into the professional academy, uh, balancing university and rugby, England under 20s and first team debuts. I know these three, uh, these three boys extremely well, I've taught all three of them, but tonight I'm going to let them introduce themselves, if I may. Ali, we'll start with you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Ali, 22, um, left SEB uh, four years now, four years ago now, um, went straight into Sari's Academy, um, was there for three years and then just graduated into the first team this last season um, and yeah, now play wing or fullback. Thank you very much. Uh, Hodgie, we'll come to you. Hi guys, Josh here, um, left SEB about two years ago, uh, play at Newcastle Falcons. Did a little bit of a degree from the first year and yeah, full back, 19. Uh, thanks, Josh. And uh, Tom? Yeah, Tom Curtis. Um, left said the last year, uh, went straight into professional setup at Sale Sharks um, and I play a fly off. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, gents, first question is from me. Uh, the three of you took different routes into an academy from. Uh, from Sebba. Ali, I'll come to you first because you went from Sebba all the way down uh, to London to Saris. Can you can you explain to the uh, to the people watching how you ended up going from uh, from Sebba to Saris? Um, yeah, so I grew up in Sale Academy. Um, was there for a few years and then came to Sebba. Um, and then just with training wise and stuff, they uh, there was Newcastle kind of camp there, so uh, that just worked out to kind of end, end up there for a, for a year or so. Uh, and then in my last year of school, um, got the opportunity just to kind of find out that Saris were kind of interested um, and had a look around and just kind of loved the place. Um, and yeah, never really looked back and just kind of jumped to this opportunity. Um, and yeah, no, I've been there ever since and yeah, loving it. So good stuff. We'll come back. We'll come back to you in a minute, Ali and, and Josh and Tom. You're slightly more straightforward. It's worth noting to, to people at home. You know, Sebba is not uh, an academy, and it's not affiliated with an academy uh, for lots of different reasons. But uh, Josh, you want to quickly talk about uh, your relationship here with the academy, and, and then obviously the senior senior academy. Uh, so yeah, I played played rugby throughout my career at Sebba. Um, got picked up during into the academy in my lower sixth year at Sebba, so quite a late one. Um, came out came out of school, went into the senior academy at Newcastle Falcons. <clears throat> did a sports coaching degree for my first year, um, but now I've loved it. Uh, it's been really good set up for me to come into, and uh, it's been really good. Good stuff. And what about you, Tom? Yeah, so um, I've been in the sales setup since I was about sixteen. Um, I only went to Sebba for sick form, so I kind of just transitioned into Sebba with. Sale uh, hand in hand, um, and then yeah, so did the under 18s leagues both in my lower sixth year and my upper sixth year, and then like I said, like I said before, just moved straight from leaving school straight into um, professional contract this year. Good stuff. I'll just say with you, Tom. What, what was the links like with uh, for you and you know and your family uh, dealing with both? You know, obviously, you're very busy lad you, you you're playing sepper you also had the, the the sale academy you also pulled into the first team in your upper sixth you also had the england stuff you know how how, how did all that link work how did the link work um yeah it was obviously it's tough it's harder than being at home um you're not you don't quite have the contact time that you would do if you were at home but i think the relationship between the academy itself and um you guys is really strong so Sale trusted what I was doing up at school to be kind of like a good enough standard of or well, good enough level of rugby to kind of not have to be with Sale hundred percent of the time. Um, so I was actually only there when I kind of needed to be there. So that was kind of the trainings leading up to the academy league um, throughout that sort of busy schedule um, with Sale, um, and it's kind of the work the same. So when during the Sebba season, so they kind of accepted that that was the focus for those few months. So they kind of took a back step. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of it, it worked really well. We like, never really had any problems with it. Um, so yeah, excellent. Uh, and Josh, you, you, your uh, 
move to Newcastle was you know pretty straightforward. You know they they they've been following you for for years. How did you find how did you find that link with Newcastle? Well, the link between uh, Sebra and Newcastle was great. I know they came down pretty much every Thursday to help the boys that obviously can't go up to Newcastle because of the boarding. So I think the connection was really good there. The coaches exchanged a lot of information between one another and kept us all up to date. And then moving up to Newcastle to uh, start a senior contract, it was, it was good. Um, obviously, I'm quite a home boy, so when I came out, it was quite a big big jump, moving into a house of six. But no, I think it was really good, really good communication between the school and the, the academy. And then a really nice like welcoming exchange from school to rugby. Yeah, good stuff. We'll come, I'll come back to you about that transition that you just talked about in, in just a moment. Ali, can I come to you? You're, you know, all, all three of these boys are extremely bright. Uh, but Ali, you, you were one of our high flyers, went through, went through the school straight. I say that. <laughs> days throughout. Uh, and obviously, you, you were determined to, to go to university. Has that worked out for you? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I've initially had a year out to try and just put rugby first, um, straight from school. Um, but I'd had a place at UCL straight um, for the year after. Um, so I went straight into that second year, second year round, did a year full time. Um, and it was probably a bit too much with rugby going on as well. Like um, just a bit, bit few clashes and um, struggled kind of to keep up with it, but still managed to get through the year. And then thankfully, uh, the uni were really good second, second year to let me go part time. So I've just finished technically like my fourth year of six kind of thing. Um, so going into my final year. Uh, next year, which will be, um, which will be, um, sure will be interesting, depending on when we actually stop out after this ride virus is over. But um, now, nah, they're looking forward to getting it done, and um, it's been manageable, which is the main thing. So, presumably, as a full-time athlete, the second you, you know, you make the first team, uh, sorry, full-time student, the second you make the first team, and they say we're, we're training on Tuesday at eleven o'clock, you're training, you know, aren't you? Yeah, 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 definitely. I think that's that's where the, the issues kind of came about a tiny bit. Um, and thankfully, both parties have kind of learned to kind of work with each other. Like we've got a guy at Saris who's really good at organising them, and um, his whole job is to kind of sort the off off pitch stuff. Um, and he's managed to kind of speak to them a lot. Um, but like you said, like especially with with the games changing between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, you never know what your training week's going to look, look like. So there can be a few clashes. Um, but thankfully, they've managed. We've managed so far. So that's the that's the main thing. Um, Tom Kurtz, we'll come back to you. Can you explain like the transition from school to club? Obviously, you, you left last last summer, so it hasn't been long for you. Um, you know, what was the biggest differences leaving here, leaving this environment, going straight into a professional setup on the first of July, and then going straight through? What, what was the differences for you, Tom? Yeah, so there wasn't really much of a uh, a break. Really, I kind of had a few weeks off, and then we jumped straight back into pre season um, with Sale. Um, the the biggest thing is probably just how demanding it is um, going into rugby and like I said, gym and things like that, just every day of your life. Um, it took me a couple of months to get used to. Um, I remember being pretty sore pretty much every day throughout um, the whole of pre-season. You don't really get, to, although what we do at Seb is very intense and it can kind of push most other schools and what we do. Um, Rugby wise, it's it was completely different uh, going into the pre season and being completely full time. Um, but yeah, once I kind of got my head around that after a couple of months um, and started doing well, and I was in a good in a good shape uh, at the end of August, it kind of went pretty seamlessly. Um, I got used to the routine and everything was going smooth, and I got a few opportunities. So um, my transition has been quite. I've been lucky, really. I've had no injuries, touch wood. Um, and yeah, everything's gone, yeah, gone well so far. Yeah, good. Well, what about you, Hodgie? How have you found it? You talked earlier about, you know, you, you, you love, love going home, you love, you know, you, you love the comfort of going back to your parents' house, and then all of a sudden you're, you, you're in a flat in, uh, in Newcastle, a house in Newcastle with six lads. How, how did you cope with that transition and training? Um, yeah, well, like, like Tom said, we didn't have too much time off, so I pretty much got off holiday. On, I think it was a Sunday, and I went straight up on that Sunday to go go back to the club. Um, moved into the house. It was it was hard because you know coming from Seb, there's a lot of things that are, they're done for you, and everyone's always going to be there for you. But then two hours away from home, you know, house with six boys, probably never cooked as much as you probably should have wanted needed to to prepare yourself. It was tough. Um, I went in with a little injury as well, so I 
unfortunately I missed a bit of the pre-season so I didn't really get to get get to grips with what was going on in pre-season so it was a bit of a slow start for me um, but no I really enjoyed it it was a big jump there. And what about you, Ali? You know, Tom talked about it being demanding on his body. You know, it was, it was a big shock. You've obviously had a couple of big knocks, big injuries, uh, a few setbacks, for, especially in the, you know, in the World Cup. That was a, a bit of a nightmare for you. Uh, you. You know, how did you find it? Yeah, I think, I think in terms of actually physically day to day, I think I, I found it, I found it like pretty, like obviously, it's had be always training a load. Um, and obviously, it's a step up in terms of intensity and physicality and stuff. Um, but then I think I just got into a bit of a cycle of injuries and stuff and it's hard to kind of break that and I think you, you uh, definitely struggle, there's a few times I was struggling but um, thankfully Touchwood the body's managed to hold out the um, last couple of years so I think, I think the thing is it's, it's a step up and I think coming out of school it's hard to get that, you think that you, you should be playing with men and, and getting used to that but you're bound to have those setbacks um, in terms of your body just adjusting to you and you getting used to your body and uh, that kind of thing um, and I think from those injuries, I've learned what what works for me and what what um, what what to use going forward. Uh, I think that's the main thing. Um, and yeah, I think that, that an injury doesn't really phase me now. If um, it sounds weird, but like a little six week or whatever, that it's minor towards compared to what I've had. So um, yeah, it's, it's set me up. It's a positive to take from it. I think yeah. with these setbacks. Absolutely, Ali. As a young eighteen year old, you walked into uh, obviously the Sari is full of. You know, uh, British Lions and, and superstars. Who, who impressed you the most at the club, uh, and why? Um, I think straight away pre-season wise, uh, it's going to surprise you probably, but Chris Ashton, pre-season wise, just in terms of never actually met someone so fit and so um, like dedicated to us to to um, to what he does. Uh, so I think in pre-season, like just seeing him operate, like literally just running rings on everyone, fitter than anyone, can sprint whenever he wants. That was pretty eye-opening. And then in terms of like, as, as the season kind of progressed, I think people like Alex Goode, um, that year when I first came in, um, Sean Melton came in as well. And those guys have been really, really helpful with me uh, going, uh, going like, through the years. Um, just always got time for you. Um, and then obviously Owen is the big one. He's just like that level of intensity he's always at. It's just something that um, you aspire to get to. Um, but um, yeah, no, I think that they're, they're, the, they're the ones, especially um, being in the backs, kind of they're the ones that I looked up to really. Sure. And what about you, Tom? Yeah, it's, it's funny Ali said that actually, because um, I had Chris Ashton in mind as well, um, especially during the pre-season. Like Ali said, he was like, came in straight away, um, winning all the fitness tests um, and was just ready to go, like pushing standards throughout day by day. Um, so yeah, I looked at him, even though he's a completely different position to me. Um, I learned loads from him, speaking to him about how how like how how he sees the game from the wing, um, and kind of what sort of stuff he would like to see from his turn and the communication stuff. Um, and then like as we built built into the season, kind of the South African guys started to join. So um, obviously, just coming from the World Cup and stuff. They were massive to, to to speak to and share their sort of experiences over the last few months. Um, so obviously I've paired with Bafta Clerk once or twice now, um, and it's it's just kind of it's kind of surreal to be fair. Um, leaving school and then the next thing you're playing with a World Cup winner. So I just try and look to those people to, to learn as much as I can. Excellent, excellent. What about you, Hodgie? I think Alex Tate was a good one for me. Um, obviously, get, he's getting on in the game now, and he's got a lot of he's got a lot of knowledge about the game. He's always had a lot of time to come to me after training, or even during training. He's always told me what I could do better, or if anything I can improve, or if I'm doing well. Uh, he's always offered his time to me, and he's a really nice guy. Uh, I think Adam Radwan as well. I think he's a bit of a freak of the game. He's crazy. He's just quite. He's very inspiring and. Can learn a lot from him. Oh, good stuff. We had uh, we had three older players uh, last week, uh, either retired or, or Fernsies, you know, coming to his last few years. And what they said is that when they joined the club, it was they were a bit like rabbit in headlights, and it was a bit of a shock to them. You're obviously young lads. Did, when you went to your clubs, did you did, was there a mentor system put in place for you? And if if so, why why is that so important? Uh, if you come to you, Ali. Uh, yeah. So. 
can't in my first year um i was obviously playing playoffs still um hanging on to the dream um but yeah so i, I got paired up with owen was mayor for kicking um and then goody was um the one that i was kind of paired up with in terms of everything else so in terms of on the lo the loan games um he'd be the one i sit down with and that kind of thing i think Every year, of, every year I was in the academy anyway, there was always someone you got paired with at the start of the year. So it'd be a coach and then a, um, a, a senior player as well of a similar position. Um, and yeah, no, I, th I think it's very, very important. Like, obviously, you want to be your own player. But if you, like, like Tom said, if you can take aspects from other people's game and, and see how they've got to where they've got, um, it's very, very important. And I think, for me, like, the, one of the more key ones that's been most helpful, helpful for me is uh, David Strettel. Um, just someone that's so down to earth from nearby at home, um, and he just always has the time to talk about um, something with you, whatever, whatever that may be. Um, but he's definitely helped with me um, last year, just just uh, with my game and and that kind of thing. But yeah, I definitely think it's important. You'll be assigned a junior soon. Oh God, pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you, Tom, were you assigned a, a mentor? And how how did you find it? Um. <sighs> Yeah, kind of. We were we were kind of paired up um, for the first block of preseason down on kind of like for fitness drills and stuff. Um, I was with Chris Ashton for that, which is kind of why I spoke about him there. Um, and then kind of mentoring stuff as we got into the season um, was Rob Dupree, um, obviously our starting fly off. So yeah, I've just been working a lot with him, just mainly just watching footage um it's kind of part of our job as a halfback kind of trying to study what you think is going to happen in the next game and kind of how people are playing the game um so just learning how he's watching things the sort of things well the sort of stuff he's looking out for from opponents and um how he's trying to win the game basically um and obviously he's listening to it works both ways so like, it's interesting for him as well, listening to my perspective on things. Um, so, yeah, that's how we were kind of working it throughout the season. Good stuff. What about you, Hodgie? Uh, well, at the start of pre-season, I was injured, so I didn't really get a mentor. But I think at Falcons, we were just a tight bunch and everyone was everyone's mentor, really. So it made us feel all welcome. We could go to anyone we want. But as soon as I got out of the gym, out, out of rehab, I did kind of float towards Toby Flood, just because his knowledge of the game and where he would see the full-backs, obviously with his kicking game and if I needed to get in the first receiver, I'd try and pick up, pick the information out of him and just he'd always give him the time of day as well just to share what he knows. And yeah. uh, We've got obviously young young boys and girls watching this uh, from all over the place and obviously their dreams to sign, to sign a, a, a pro con contract. My observation about you three in particular uh, is the fact you, you had a real professional approach from a, from a really young age at school. You know, uh, the, the endless kicking that you guys did, uh, the, the, the endless place kicking, the time that you spent in the gym, but also little sacrifices like your, the, your diets. You know, you didn't eat any garbage. You certainly didn't drink much alcohol. You know, and I'll come to you first, Hodgie, because your, your dad owns a brewery and you don't drink beer. Hell, that, <laughs> you're a better man than I am. Um, so I'm going to come to you. You know, what kind of... For, for a child now to really make it, does he have to start making real early sacrifices at a young age? I think you do have to make sacrifices at certain points, but you don't have to make them all the time. I think as long as you've got that drive and you've got that vision of where you want to be, I think you, you've, it's all up to you to achieve it. Obviously, you're going to have the colleagues around you and your coaches and everything that's going to help you get there. But I think it's, it's mainly down to you. But like, just, just have fun and enjoy it because... When you enjoy it, you can try new things. And if you make mistakes, it's just going to give you fuel to make yourself better. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And Tom, what are you? You were fanatical for the last couple of years uh, with your training uh, and, you know, what, what you're consuming. You know, what, you know how, how kind of obsessed are these young, you know, what, what do these young boys have to do? And when do they need to start? Yeah, I kind of started um, learning about Throughout said when I first started with Sale kind of thing, um, they were good at kind of bringing nutritionists in and giving us talks and stuff. Um, and I think it's generally something I was just quite interested in anyway. Um, the nutrition and how you, how you can kind of best look after your body and prepare for things. Um, 
like it's not for everybody but I think you do have to make sacrifices as an athlete you can't if you if you've got big aspirations you can't kind of just like do what you want drink all the time eat what you want um so you do have to make sacrifices in that sort of way um but like Hodge said it's about enjoying it as well you've got to enjoy the like the good moments so after a game after a big win uh personal achievements things like that so I think early on when you kind of get into if you're working towards a pro contract uh, contract it's not the biggest thing to worry about um I think focus on your skill set focus on your attitude uh your mentality um and then I think those sort sort of minor things like the diet and things come a bit later so I think that's right. Ali, pretty much anything else to add to that? Yeah, I think, like you said, I think you don't need to put a massive focus on it when you when you're younger. Like being young is about enjoying yourself and enjoying the game, and especially at school, you need all the carbs you can get to try and get through. Like it's you're doing so much exercise. So like, um, I think again, like like Tom said, you learn what works for you. Like I, I definitely, it takes a couple of years out of school to kind of learn what 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 works, what diet, what you should be eating. Um, you're obviously going from school where you've got everything um, time to find out what's easy to cook what's healthy to cook um, and then like your sleeping pattern your gym what what works for you um, I think yeah it takes time but I don't think there's any rush to be like doing it religiously it's about getting when you're younger getting the training in and, and doing enjoying yourself but also trying to uh, do that at the right time um, but yeah no I think there's no yeah it's just echoing what the boys are saying really I think that's a fabulous uh, message for me to just pause on there, actually. So thank you very much for that, Ali. I'm going to come to you, Jason. Have you been looking at the uh, questions boards? I know they're fl- I can see them flowing in. Yeah, they're flying in. I'm going to do a bit of uh, I'll type back some answers to some of the questions. I think the first question to Ali, if we start with you, is how old were you when you started playing rugby and where did you start playing? What did it look like? What did that environment look like? Um, so I was about... I was about seven or eight, um, and then like kind of just playing it with football at the time. Uh, probably was second to football growing up in Manchester, um, and then got to about ten or eleven and started at Bowden. Um, and yeah, no, I had one of the, one of my favourite coaches there, just Tony Bennett, who was really inspirational for me. And I think got to the stage where you got to pick between football and rugby, and he was the one that kind of sold it to me. Um, and yeah, no, that was there for six seven years at uh, Bowden and uh, still got a uh, place in my heart so yeah nice. the mighty Bowden and a mighty Bowden, Bowden. yeah Hodgie where did you start how old was you what did it look like so I originally started at Sedba at nine obviously second to football again so I, was, I always wanted to be a footballer up until like my lower sixth year so yeah I had a had a coach at Sedba called Juan Gonzalez he basically kicked it off me really I was passing the ball forwards all day long getting it wrong, but he, he he brought me to one side one day and he was like, you know, do you want to play rugby? And I was like, yeah, I want to play rugby. So I just picked up a ball from then on. He took me to sevens tournaments. And really just made me enjoy the sport from there on. Um, so then going to my lower sixth year with Simon Mulholland and Stu. It was good. Good stuff. Juan, Juan the legend. Yeah. He's a lot of stuff. Whereas he'll be listening now. He'll be jumping up and down, punching the air. <laughs> PC, where did it all start for you? What age? Yeah, I was kind of, um, I was late to it all, I think, in respective. Uh, I kind of had, like Ali said, grown up around it, it's, everything's football based really. Um, so I didn't I, I didn't really like rugby until I kind of joined secondary school. Um, and that was kind of my first taste of it really, um, in year seven. Um, I actually started off as a back rower, um, was chucked in at the deep end there. And um, but yeah, kind of just juggling all sports at secondary school um, just gave me a great like, just loads of choices to make. And then gradually, as I just went through the years, it kind of just faded out and kind of just started to focus on my rugby. Um, I joined Stockport. I think I was probably thirteen, fourteen, um, and that was kind of my first taste of a proper rugby club environment and kind of the culture of rugby and how that, how that sort of looks compared to football. Um, but yeah, and then Sale came in when I was about 16 and then 
like I said, then everything else kind of faded out, started to focus more on sale and then obviously going to Sebba and not looking back. Do you think playing lots of sports when you were younger has helped you at this level now? Yeah, 100%. I don't think you can, uh, I don't think it's a substitute for it really. You have to kind of, I think the best thing for you kind of to develop as a, in any sport or as a general athlete is to just get stuck into as many as you can. Um, like everything from girls sports, hockey, like netball, things like that, to, to cricket, to rugby, to football, tennis, all those things to just work on, like your hand-eye coordination and things like that and moving in different ways. I think everything helps. Cool, thanks. Uh, discipline, someone's asking around sort of self-discipline. Mine's terrible. I constantly get caught in the cookie jar. But is it something that you that comes naturally to you guys being disciplined or is it something that you've learned to become throughout time? Uh, Hodgie, we'll start with you. Uh, I think I think with me because one of the problems that I was when I went into into senior academy environment was my weight. So I think I went in around seventy kilograms in my upper sixth year, which is pretty light. Uh, so I didn't really have any discipline. They said you can eat what you want, but just be careful what you eat because you don't want to be coming out with high skin folds. So I've never been on that been that discipline before. So kind of thing. I, Browse and eat what I want, but just be careful with it. Yeah, Ali. Yeah, similar. Like I think, yeah. There's always. I think that's the classic one. Is you come out of school and you 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 you're so light compared to what you need to be. Um, I think I did the opposite. I think the, the injuries are a bit of a struggle, but in terms of like, I tried to just put on weight as quick as possible, kind of thing. And it probably wasn't the right weight um, at the time. Um, so I was, yeah, I got up to 95 kg at one point, which was uh, very heavy for my frame. Um, and I just, yeah, I think from there, at that point, I was like, yeah, I need to actually think about what I'm doing. It's, obviously, there's no benefit to being this heavy. Like, what am I actually getting out of it? Um, and then from then on, it's been a case of, like, like watching what, what I know what I need to eat and that kind of thing. And I don't really struggle um, anymore in terms of having that, like, saying no to a chocolate bar, I think. That kind of thing, and I think, like I said earlier, it's about having it at the right time. Like, if you've earned the chocolate bar, then you can have it. But if you sat there not doing anything the whole day, um, then it might not be the, the wisest option, kind of thing. And I think you learn that um, over over a few years. But yeah, yeah, I'm glad you said that. I was just about to say, where did you learn all this information? Because in your head, you just mentioned, no, and, and Hodge mentioned, I needed to get bigger, I needed to be this, and you were 95 kilograms. So, so where did you pick up all the information and learning about what's right for you? physically um i think you, you're getting guidance from your club all the time and 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 then obviously it's what's right, right for you i think i think i kind of feel like i did learn the hard way in terms of not necessarily um being in the right body for the time maybe being a bit too heavy for what i should have been and and trying trying to train the wrong things and i think it's taken a, it took a bit of time to work out what works for me and what I feel in. And I, thought, I think the main thing for me, for me was being honest with my trainers. Like I've definitely got a tendency to just kind of, well, I used to have a tendency to just kind of crack on and I feel something a bit tight, I'll just crack on and, and do it. Whereas, I mean, I think that's probably out of fear when you come out of school, you just feel like you need to be in every session, you need to be feeling why you're not feeling right kind of thing. And I think I've learned that that's not, your body's telling you something for a reason. So, and, and, and thankfully the guys at Sarri's are, so good at just listening to me and, and listening to what I'm saying um, and that's kind of grown over the over the years as you kind of learn each other uh, learn to work with each other sorry um, but yeah that was that's what I've kind of I've learned so awesome thanks mate CC uh, Mr Oliver was chuckling when he when you said you played in the back row before we had to do some tackling practice in the summer when we're allowed social distancing lifted Absolutely. how's discipline for you how have you found it yeah, I think you can talk about discipline with like loads of things. Um, but for me, it's kind of probably been about looking after myself. Um, like I said, it was tough moving into a professional environment, um, sort of stress on the body and things like that. Um, and I think that's when you have to become more disciplined with things like looking after yourself, whether that's staying a bit after training to do the right things or coming a bit early, warming up a bit early when kind of like Ali said get to know your body um knowing about knowing about your past injuries and potential risks and things like that um so yeah I can definitely like understand about me Hodgie and Ali probably all been in similar boats um going into the first team environments all pretty 
small in comparison probably to a lot of the older players and you kind of feel a lot of pressure to kind of get to their sort of weight and strength as like quickly as you can and you kind of forget that actually you're actually an 18 year old lad not a 20 year old 28 year old like man um I think that definitely that's what I felt with me anyway um and I kind of took the stress off that sort of side and kind of just accepted that I like, I've got a few years growth left in me naturally I'll just kind of let that take its course and um focus on other areas but with discipline, yeah, I've definitely had to up it. I've definitely upped it with my diet. I've definitely upped it um, in this kind of break we've had now with uh, training and self-discipline in terms of how easy is it going to be to just sit on my bed all day and kind of chuck the TV on. Um, when actually, we don't know when we're going to return, so you've got to, you've got to get some work done. Um, but yeah, I think it's different for everybody. You all might be slightly lighter than the others, the older boys in, in your groups, but good luck trying to catch any of you. You know, they'd have a job, especially if you get them on the outside. The last one for me was just around sort of emotional stuff. So you're going to have lots of times, or I've had lots of times where you've not had the opportunity, you've not been informed, you might have a bit of injury. How have you dealt with sort of emotional setbacks? Do you keep it in? Do you share it? Do you let your frustrations boil over? What does that look like for you? TC, we'll go straight back to you. Um, yeah, I was trying to think about this season and kind of when I've had those sorts of moments. Um, I think I've been quite fortunate um, with kind of opportunities I've had. Um, I've had quite a few bench appearances um, with the first team and stuff. And I think I've probably just felt like Want, like wanting game time, um, wanting opportunities. Um, well, that's in training. Or like I said, wanting more minutes off the bench. Kind of prove yourself has been numerous times this season where I've come off the pitch with like five minutes under my belt and just thought, like, what have I actually done there? I've not shown anyone anything. Um, and just kind of been angry with myself. Um, but yeah, I think I'm quite. I'm a person who wouldn't share it with anyone. It kind of, I'll just deal with it myself in my own sort of space and then uh, crack on. Um, but I don't think you can. You can't dwell on anything in professional sport. Um, you've kind of just got to take it on the chin, whatever comes, whether that's an injury or whether that's team selection or it can come in many forms. I think you've just got to kind of brush it off and and keep going. It's about perseverance and continue to work hard and continuing to have whatever your goal is in mind. Cheers, TC. Hodgie? Yeah, I think I think my biggest challenge has actually come this year, uh, being called into that apprentice and then getting it cut short with my ankle, playing in the under-20s game. Um, for me, I do like to talk talk to my close ones about it and just relieve their pressure or just get it off your mind. Um, for me, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's good to keep it in. And for my own opinion, um, I feel like letting other people know, which means can look out for you and they can help you if you need be. Or yeah, but I think depending on who you are, really, like TC, you like to keep it in and get on with it. I'm probably the opposite. I like to keep contact with people, coaches, physios, parents, let them know what's happening. Good man. Cheers, Hodgie. Ali. Yeah, similar similar to Hodgie. Um, I've always been one. That I'm very bad if I let things kind of build up inside me, so I'm better better at ringing someone, although they might not want to not like what they get on get me off on the phone in terms of either I'm moaning to them or I'm angry or whatever. But uh, it tends to be mum or dad to be fair. So, <laughs> but um, no, they're very good at listening to me. Um, and then I think just dealing with the like injury side, I think the main thing for me to get me through that was just basically just set yourself little goals like that. So I know it's cliche, but like. The worst thing you can do is think, oh, it's a five-month injury. You best think, like, oh, well, in three weeks I'm going to be out of the boot or three weeks and I'm running on that kind of thing. I think just that, for me, that was the one thing that got me through, like, just having those little goals. Or be it, like, something completely different to the injury, like, you'll set like, a goal in uni or set a goal in, in the gym or something like that. It's just that's the key thing and set yourself new little challenges um, so you get that competitive, like, kind of burning fire out. I think that's the main thing, like... We all obviously have it inside of us, um, and you can't be—we can't release it when you're not playing. So, I think um, it's key to have something to kind of still kind of get up, get up for in the morning, kind of thing. But great stuff, great advice, Ali. Good goal setting. 
And just for the panelists, keep the questions coming in. We'll try and get the answers back to you at a later date as well. Fletch, over to you. Cheers, mate. Good question. Strong work, Duffs. And, and you're multitasking as well. Well done. Uh, Fletch, just a few things from me. What's the, what's the stuff that excites you about rugby? Um, Hodgie, what's the best stuff? That... Um, might sound a bit different, but I just like running around. I like, I like trying to run away from people, just having, having fun, burning off energy, doing skills, stuff like that. Getting with your mates. Nice, good work. Ali, what's the stuff that excites you about rugby? Um, I, love, I just love competing. Like, I love going up against people and, and trying to beat them and that kind of thing. I think that's the thing that... Like I said earlier, like that kind of like drive drive for me is having something to kind of get and, and go for. And I think rugby is the perfect one for that. You've just you've got people to compete with for positions or if you're playing with them, then you're actually going going against the other team. I think that's one of the things that always drives me and excites me. So mate, um, people who who were who were who watched you during the said videos would be a little bit confused and now they see you wearing a number that's either eleven or fourteen, sometimes fifteen. But when you played in the, in the Mighty Browns, you often played a 10. Yeah. Why have you moved to the outside back? Um, to be fair, it was, it was, I think it was one of those where I, came, I think we went, into, went in at 10 at Sarries and it was a big step up in terms of detail and that kind of thing. And I think um, I just kind of gradually got more and more opportunities, like if, whether it was in training, just to kind of show myself in the outside channels. Um, and I think they kind of liked that that threat there. Um, and I think I I I didn't initially was a bit skeptical about what um, what it was going to look like and and um, and um, whether I'd get enough touches on the ball that kind of thing. Obviously going from ten, but um, I think it's it's something that really excites me. And I think I don't like just saying yeah I'm a winger or whatever. I like the challenge of I want to be be able to play like centre um, foot wing fullback. And I think that's one thing going forward. I want to try and. Um, try and do play a few more positions and, and that kind of thing. So, if they give you an option, so they they're holding out all the shirts. Well, not all of them. Shirts from yeah. ten to fifteen. Which one would you pick? Uh, probably fifteen. I just think, yeah, nowadays with the kicking game in, in place, you're going to get a load of touches and a load of counters. So I think that's probably where I'd go. But nice, yeah. good work. Uh, TC, mate, what what excites you about rugby? Yeah, I think I'm similar to Ali um, on this one. I just love competing against people and kind of trying to do as well as I can. Um, I'm a bad loser, so I'm always trying to win in everything I do. Um, and yeah, just trying to see where I can get to, trying to set my bar as high as I can and just kind of trying to get after it, really. Um, I think that's the ultimate challenge. And where do you think that comes from? Like, where does that behaviour come from around your competitiveness? Um, I think probably started like 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 we mentioned before, just playing a load of sports, being young. Um, I mean, you can't shy away from competition in sport, can you? There's always two teams generally, and there's always a winner and there's always a loser. So, and who wants to be on the losing side, really? So, I think that that's just how I've always been, um, and I think that's how I'm just gonna carry myself throughout the career. I just want to win things and do as well as I can. Yeah, I can definitely remember some sessions. You were pretty grumpy when things didn't go your way. That's definitely so that I actually noticed it about all three of you. So just on the noticing, TC, and I actually want to stay with you, uh, and you're not allowed to say physicality because that would be obvious. What stuff did you notice that was different about age group rugby and open rugby? Um, I'd probably say structure um, and how... Yeah, I think you go from playing, it slowly builds up throughout the age group. You go from playing when you first start to just having a ball in your hands and not hearing anything and just looking up and trying to do whatever you can to um, moving it to Seba where you start to get a few calls and a few sort of shapes and you've got the freedom as well. And then moving into obviously playing fly off, you kind of got to be the main man in terms of decisions and what sort of things to play with. Um, I just think the detail and the amount of stuff you, you've you got to know um, in order to, to run the team at kind of the top level. Um, that was the biggest thing other than kind of like you said there, like the physicality and how much that demands of you. The actual 
mental side of the game and how switched on you've got to be and how much you've got to know and how much information you've got to retain. I think that was that was the toughest thing. Okay, mate. And was it who are the players have you looked up to from a fly off stand up point of view? Who are the guys who you who you watched or you do watch and you admire and you copy and stuff like that? Um, I think the guys. Yeah, the guys I look to obviously uh, Owen Farrell. He's leading the way, kind of in my sort of position, ten, twelve um, in the world. Um, and then I'm interested in kind of New Zealanders as well. So you've heard Barrett's people like that um, I just I, I kind of watch everyone all the backs I think like I said before I've learned almost more from talking to wingers and talking to back three players than I have from actually talking to fly offs and watching fly offs um, I think especially in our positions I think the more you can understand about playing in other positions um, the more it can help you in your own position Ali mate what stuff did you notice I know it was a while ago now, you're almost... In terms of going from, from age group to... Yeah, age group um, to senior stuff, what was the things there? That yeah, you... similar, similar to Tom, I think one thing I think definitely would be that time on the ball. I think um, you, at school you kind of, you, you can be as deep as you want and you can, and you can run whatever moves and really, really kind of get away with things. Um, whereas as soon as you get into that environment, if you're too flat or too deep, then you're just getting smashed. Um, and... and it might it, it just the same kind of things don't work. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it is still still rugby, um, and you are trying to get the same outcome. Um, I think yeah, you're right in terms of the structure. Um, but if you, I think it'd be very. I think one, it's hard to describe it in terms of for me coming in to like like Tom probably found you come in and there's a load of calls, there's a load of stuff. Um, but then once you actually learn that you kind of think, oh, well, it's actually not that. You're, just, you're still trying to get the same outcome. Um, so I think, obviously, you, you put these labels on it and that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, if you simplify every team meeting down, it's basically how can we get quick ball? How can we um, basically be the opposition um, kind of thing? Um, but, yeah, no, I think that the main thing would be that, that detail and that, um, that, that structure. So, cool. Oji, was there anything different for you, mate? What stuff did you notice? Uh, I think speed of ball and how, how fast everything's going. Uh, obviously, with age grade, it was, you know, you're going to have little stops and stops and starts, but how consistent and how fast the ball comes out of the rock or the scrum is pretty fast. And you've got to, got to keep up with it and chuck out the information that you know in your head just there and then. Also, with, with the kicking side of it, obviously, coming from Sabre, we don't really kick. Um, but yeah, it was just getting used to everything. Just you get a lot more ball. But yeah, it's good. Cool, mate. And uh, I, I just want to sort of um, spend a little bit of time around competition in terms of the competitive opportunities, how much you play, who you play for. So, so within that, uh, the performance pathway, so all you, all you guys have been involved with the England setup. What sort of, you know, what's the, what's the stuff you want to share on that around the experiences there that you've had? What's the best stuff? Uh, go on. You can go, Hodge. Uh, best stuff in the pathway. What was the question again? Sorry. Yeah, just around the pathway. So you, you, you guys have played quite a lot for England, all of you, 18s, yeah. 20s. Yeah. Uh, what's the best stuff? What does that afford you? Well, what um, you like? Obviously, with all, with all those experiences and games we've played, I think it really sets us up uh, for going into the first team. Uh, I think. Obviously, you're playing with the best in the country and against the best people in other countries as well. Uh, so, you're obviously, you're testing yourself with skill sets and against equally um, good players. So, I think that gives you a good setup and a good benchmark to go from there um, where you can set yourself aims to then go on into the first team and do that and apply into practice. So, yeah. CC, what are you thinking? Um, yeah, I think being in under 18 stuff and match day squads, I think. That gives you your first taste of sort of like it's the closest thing to a professional environment you can get before actually being there, if that makes sense. Um, with how you looked after and things you've got to do and how serious the actual moment is. Um, but apart from the actual match day stuff, the training, I've always loved the trainings with England. I think you're challenged in different ways. Um, it's kind of a breath of fresh air coming from your clubs. Um, training with the best 
players in the country. Um, I know I've always come away, whether it's a one-day, two-day or two-week camp from uh, being with like the national team to you just come back to your club and you, you feel like you're in a, twice the better player you were before. Um, pick up new things, your skill set sharper. Um, and yeah, I just think it, it's really good for that. Cool. Ali? Yeah, literally, yeah, I was about to echo what Tom said, basically. I think I always used to love the camps and, and training. I think, like, speaking to um, Nick, my housemate, Nick Tompkins, and he, we were saying, like, yeah, the days when we used to go to, like, Leeds on, like, a rainy rainy weekday or whatever, miss, miss school for it, and you'd have, like, these amazing sessions where, like, you just get challenged in completely different ways. Um, they're just the most memorable. Like, it might sound um, trivial in terms of, like, obviously playing to your country and stuff, but looking back, the, those sessions um, in Leeds or wherever it may have been were, like, got so much out of them. And, um, yeah, like, like Tom literally said, it was, it's just challenging you a different way. It got, got you thinking and obviously, like, like you probably saw, Flex, we, we'd probably get rattled a few times during the sessions, but <laughs> I'd never really experienced that before. And I think that was something that was, like, uh, really good to experience and, and just see, see what you like to, under different circumstances and that kind of thing. And, yeah, no, I miss those days, to be fair. What was your made around around you playing for other clubs? So what was which other teams have you played for? Being on loan, how how useful was it? What would you do different if you could have your time again? Or for me, sorry. yeah. Um, to be fair, so I played I played that one um, at OAS, um, and then other loan club I played uh, was for Bedford as well this this year. Um, to be fair, like I'm not gonna, I've, I've not, I never really played enough for, for either either team. To be fair, so not the one to talk about. But I think it's it's definitely important. I think the boys have kind of echoed it um, earlier on in terms of um, the fact that you come into this setup and especially at a club that's like Saris or wherever you may be, you, you're obviously competing, um, and it's it's really important to get to get those games. Um, and I think it's definitely from going from school. And that one is always a step up, and I think. Saris are quite good in terms of graduating you through the ranks. So you'll play that one and then, then into the champ the next year or a better that one team. And then and then hopefully by that point you kind of graduated through. And I think a few boys that, that I know have been through Amptill and then kind of worked their way up. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. Um, but yeah, I think the thing is we are obviously rugby players and you need to be playing games. So um, it's key to, to get that game time somewhere, wherever that might be, wherever that, wherever that may be, sorry. TC, I can see you nodding your head, mate. What, 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 what are you thinking? Around? Yeah, I can't really speak too much about uh, playing on loan either. I've kind of been two places, didn't play at Sedgley Tigers um, in that two um, because of an injury. But then went back after that to Sale FC um, in that one, played, only got 10 minutes, one game. Um, and then I was kind of training with the first team squad more. Um, but yeah, I just think it's big on the game time sort of thing. I think it's, I think they're the, the minutes on the pitch. I think you learn way more than you do training. Um, so I think it's definitely the most important thing for a player's development to actually be getting game minutes um, because you can't you can't preset the circumstances. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't you don't know where you're going to find yourself one minute. So I think definitely the game time sort of thing. If, if you're not getting it at your club, then the loan option is a really good one. What do you want about you, mate? What you want yeah, to for, for, me, for me, the game time is a big, big thing. Obviously, coming out of school, I went to Northumbria University, did a year there. So I got a lot, a lot of game time playing for them at 15 and or on the wing. Um, I thought it was just, it was good. Um, you learn a lot from it. Obviously, it wasn't a professional environment, but I think it was as close as you can get to a professional environment. And then this year just gone. This currently this year I've been down at Marlton Park for a bit, uh, getting a bit of game time over in Darlington. Uh, it was good, just getting used to all the physicality. Um, yeah, you, you can learn a lot from it, but um, sometimes you just, you've got to stay switched on and think you are a professional player. You, you've got to do all the basics right. You can't just think because you've gone down to a club that's not as big as the club that you're normally at. You can't think you're better than everyone else. You've still got to stay grounded. And do everything right and help us win. Cool, mate. Uh, I want to stay with you. What would be your 
ideal session. I'm curious. I, I, I do like asking this question because I'm interested I in what you guys think. Your know, ideal training session. So one session, it's built around you know, the stuff that you'd want to do in a training session. Everybody have a thing about it. Hodgie, what would the ideal training session look like? So, so we've warmed up. Um, I love attacking. So obviously attacking's, attacking's definitely got to be in there. Three on twos, maybe just to get, get going through the hands. Then maybe move into a, a counter attacking, counter counter attacking setup. Treat the ball through, attack. Obviously, running is one of my, I feel is one of my strengths. So obviously, I've got to have a bit of running there for a bit of counter attacking. Uh, defensive as well. Uh, defensive is a big part of the game in my position. So I'd obviously have a bit of a uh, defense block in there. Maybe th three different exercises alternate between each one. Uh, but yeah, just generally attacking maybe a 15 on 15, a bit of grab, so you get used to what it's going to be like in a game, obviously playing professional players. Um, but yeah, I think that would be my ideal. Simple as well to make you now head coach. Uh, Ali, what would your ideal session be? Um, very similar, to be fair, but I think I'd definitely put a massive focus on on the 15 on 15. I think like that's definitely, especially if you're not playing uh, that weekend or whatever, that's definitely the perfect time of the week where you can get that that match fitness um, and that kind of match intensity. Um, we're very big on at the club having like a Tuesday session being kind of 15 on 15 and, and just basically going out, not not contact, but um, but yeah, let's get up to that intensity and, and getting that competition in. I think that's that's one thing I definitely look forward to. Um, and then, yeah, I know in terms of drill wise, like, yeah, I know like attacking overload, that kind of thing and just get get the ball through the hands and get, get running around um, and obviously football to warm up just to, just keep us, get us nice and warm, so yeah. Well, as in, use a football or play football? Play football, play football, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little five, five on five or something, yeah, it's got to be done, so. Stop it. TC, have you got anything different to that? What would your session be? Yeah, I'm kind of big around just game situations, um, competing, like dead competitive sessions, I feel like you always get the most out of them, whether you're on the losing side or the winning side, so um yeah, just major challenges really. Just it doesn't have to be a fifteen on fifteen. It can be just smaller sided things, but all rules, kicking, passing, um, no real restrictions on it. Just so you've got unlimited decisions really. Um, I think that's kind of where I'd like it. Both sides of the ball. I won the bet. That's what I said. You would say to Rusty. I said, Rusty, I bet TC says I wanted to be competitive. There must be a winner and a loser. Yeah. I'm not that bothered about anything else. I just want to, I just want some situations where I can go and win the game. Um, mate, last one from me. Um, it's it's actually around coaching behaviour and what stuff do you think is important with grown ups who are trying to help you? So what sort of things would you want from your coach or your teacher? What stuff would you see as important? Um, Ali, I'm going to come to you first, mate. Um, I think for me, um, so the best coaches I've had have always been people Ali, that can have, you hear me? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Um, people, the best coaches I've always had have always been ones to put me in, in those uncomfortable positions. And I think I always... At the time, I'm obviously probably not enjoying it and and and, and getting quite, probably wound up and stuff. But they're the ones that have always got the best out of me. And I think um, those the, the most memorable sessions are probably ones where you learn maybe because you've not um, you've not done something right or you've you've got wound up and done something wrong or that kind of thing. I think looking back when when you get home after that, that evening, that's that's the ones you look back on. You like, oh, that was actually a really good session. I learned a lot there. Um, and then I think you've got to balance that with someone who's definitely there supportive and you feel that you can talk to about anything as well. Like there's so much more to, to life than just rugby. And I think a coach and like a mentor almost has got to be there for you as well alongside that. Um, so you can actually have that relationship, but then someone that you know has got your best interests at heart, um, but can, can get you to that, that place where you, you don't probably like being, but then you do like it at the same time. So. Um, they're the ones that they're the best coaches for me, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard it described uh, as and ready so it's high challenge and high support. So you want to be yeah. in yeah. this sort of top right area where you That's know, got, people are like <coughs> pushing you. However, you, know, you definitely feel as you got there. How do you worry about you, mate? What what skills or behaviours are important in the coach? Uh, pretty much what Ali said. Really, uh, I like 
my my best coaches have always ones that I've had a good contact with. So been able to talk to them about anything really, not just rugby. Um, obviously been able to talk to them about rugby and them having a good knowledge about what I've done right or what I've done wrong has always been good. Um, and then touching on challenges as well. Uh, I don't. I normally find myself comfortable. So when all the coaches challenge me, that's when I find it hard, and that's when I get the most out of it. So. I feel like when they're, when they're challenging you, that's the best type of coach. Um, but also knowing your strengths and knowing your weaknesses because then they can help yeah. you get better. What I'm not going to focus on your weaknesses. What's your what's your top three strengths, mate? What, what, what stuff do you think you do really well? Uh, I think I think my kicking game, game has got a bit better than when I left school. Um, I think I'm now more vocal across the pitch, so more demanding 15, controlling the wingers. 10, letting them know where the space is, uh, and then probably running, just being an elusive runner. Yeah, yeah, you've had some good moments with the ball in your hands, to be fair. TC, what about you, mate? Skills, behaviours of a coach, what stuff you're looking for? Last question. Yeah, I don't have too much to add, really, on what Ali and Josh have said. Um, what they've said around support is dead important and um, building real good relationships because. I think it's massive on that trust sort of thing. I think you've got to be able to trust your coach um, for them to, well, for you to be able to listen to sort of feedback from them. Um, and I think a massive trait is energy. Uh, I don't think there's anything worse than having like quite a dual coach who's just kind of speaks like one sort of tone and doesn't get his players kind of up and excited about training. Um, I think that's one thing I took away from at Sebber, I'm sure the boys will agree. Um, working with Simon and Stu, we, we training in, on game day, there's loads of energy built up around it. Um, and it just creates a good buzz and a good energy right from the offset. And I think you get a better a better session and kind of a better reaction from the players when a coach is like that. Mate, great. Awesome. Thanks. Well, from my point of view, thanks for your time. I've loved it. Enjoyed catching up up with you um, I have very fond memories of you guys charging around well, as, as you can tell by me smiling when I'm talking about it definitely brought thank, you as, uh, thank you very much as well Fletch for, for coming on this evening uh, boys it's, it's a huge um, huge pleasure uh, to have you you guys back it's great you know Seb has got this conveyor belt of great players uh, going into the academy leagues uh, and beyond and, and you're three excellent athletes and and competitors and, and great role models and uh, we're really excited about your futures and watching uh, when the when the season starts again uh you know how far you go and, uh, and what you achieve so lads very best of luck stay in touch and uh, we'll hopefully see you soon next week we've got british uh we're changing codes to hockey we've got british olympic gold medalist, medalist krista cullum next week and that's uh, that's monday same time at 7.30. We're really, really looking forward to that. So thanks again, everybody. And for, thanks to the panellists. And we'll see you all soon.